All right. Good Friday evening, everybody. Jim Hobbs coming at you with my carnivore co-host down below me or left or right somewhere is Brian Damage Foresight of Kicks. And we're bringing on board Brian Shanker from the Meat Tribe channel with us today. He's going to hang out with us for a while. So Brian, welcome back for a little bit longer than your seven minute segment. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, we uh, just to let you know, you were missed at the Keto Rocks retreat. Many people like Joan and, and Linda were inquiring, you know, where's Brian? How come he's not here? And uh, and the reality of it is you got a lot of stuff going on with four kids and, and a real estate career and uh, yeah. always get a chance and a wife. You don't always get a chance to uh, just break away and, and get a few days to yourself. So hopefully next year you can do that. But uh it was good to see the rest of everybody else show up this weekend. And, and for the most part, I would say we had great weather. Um, we had a little bit rain on Saturday, but that actually actually played out good. It kept it cool, never really extremely hot. So I thought it overall, I was, uh, everybody who attended really made it for a great event in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? What'd you think of the event, Brian? Um, yeah, it was fun. I mean, uh, it's out of the ordinary for me, you know, traveling with no gig and, and no guitars on my back. So, um, it was kind of nice to just hang out and, and, you know, hang out with all, all the people that I see online all the time and, and see them in, in person. Yeah. And, you know, the only, the only gear you flew with this time was your, uh, your candy thermometer, your thermometer, your <laughs> thermometer pop, I mean. And, uh, and that came in handy, especially on Friday night. Yeah. I know Brian was asking how in the world did he cook all those ribeyes with just one thermometer? <laughs> I, I was very impressed to see the picture. So I was following along the retreat at home on Facebook with all the pictures and posts. And when I saw that grill loaded up with ribeyes and Brian sitting there at the, at the helm, and I was like, does he have multiple meat temp probes going on at once or what how is you know because cooking on a grill that you don't know there's hot and cold spots and yeah. different thicknesses of the ribeyes and um, I've never been able to successfully manage just the the stick probe you know instant instant read and and you know come out good I like my temp so Brian was there a lot of pressure on you to manage all those ribeyes on a grill you've never used before that, you know, may have hot and cold spots on it and different thickness of ribeyes and all that. Uh, it was a challenge. Um, well, yeah, that part of it was a challenge and the, the amount of steaks was a challenge, <laughs> but we started off, uh, I started off putting them in, in the oven and in, inside the house cause they, you know, there's no smoker. So I, was, I wanted to bring them up to temperature, but, because there were so many of them, I mean, the oven was just full. <laughs> I tried to cram all those um, trays in there. And uh, so I think I got it up to right around 100 degrees when I checked. Um, and then I just pulled them back off because I figured at least they're, you know, over room temperature. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I started that out. They weren't, they weren't, um, up to temperature on the inside. So the, the challenge was not to overcook the ones that, that for the people that wanted a medium rare and not to undercook the ones that people wanted uh, medium. Mm -hmm. But it, it was, uh, and, the, and, and yeah, like you said, the, the, the grill, one end was hotter than the other. So when I threw them all on there, the ones at, at the, on the uh, right side cooked a lot faster and the ones on the left side were just sort of sitting there and I found out later that the burner on the end there wasn't even working <laughs> so, oh. but overall it all came out right there were a couple that like um uh Shannon was sitting next to me and she had asked for a medium and hers came out rare or medium rare mine came out it was supposed to be medium rare and it was it wasn't bad, but it wasn't, you know, it's a little bit over. So we just swapped our steaks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that works. <laughs> I tell you what, those are some huge ribeyes. As I was stuffed 
Friday night. I think Brian and I oh. talked about that. I mean, literally, I felt like I had a brick in my stomach from Friday till Saturday, not till after Saturday afternoon. I felt like I was walking around with a brick right there in the upper abdomen area. Well, there was a lot of other stuff that was involved <laughs> besides just steak. So, <laughs> yeah, we won't blame. It wasn't. Well, you know, here here's a shout out. I, before I forget, I just want to say thank you to the Colonial Beach uh, Bed and Breakfast Plaza Bed and Breakfast to uh, Dave and, and Misan. Thank you so much for your hospitality, for for opening up the whole place just for us. Um, it was uh, the perfect venue for an event like this. And also thanks to uh, the various attendees, like Linda brought in, uh, oh my gosh, I know Brian can, can attest to this, the, uh, the oh, pork, pork, belly. pork belly was delicious. Oh my gosh, was that good? And then she made the chocolate, made Brian's recipe of his chocolate chip cookies. Now they tasted great, but my body did not react to them the way my taste buds did. <laughs> yeah. And and that may have been the culprit for my uh, for my my brick, but I can just tell you there was so much food there, food galore for people uh, Friday and Saturday, in my opinion. Yeah. So, so did you guys? Uh, I know a lot of people that were there. I think eat just one meal a day. Did that go out the window? Were you guys eating three meals, four meals, five meals a day? Oh, I would say five meals a day, but the place that we stay at is a bed and breakfast. So they serve breakfast at nine o'clock. And so, you know, you kind of, I, I, I broke my rule for those two days. I had breakfast just because, it, you know, it was, it was still keto. Mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't my one meal a day. I think some people, uh, I think most people probably had a couple meals, but I don't, I didn't really see anybody like graze eating throughout the whole day, but there was other stuff other than just steaks. We had, uh, Peggy had made her tuna fish salad, chicken salad, and cauliflower salad. Um, and that was pretty much available for anybody who wanted it at any time. But, you know, there was this other stuff too. <laughs> there was, there was pork rinds, there was cheese and ham and wisps. Wisps, yeah, the, the wisps there. Did you have any of those, Brian? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there was there was lunch meat and vegetables and you know for people that eat keto and uh, and uh, what's her, um, uh, Mimi brought a cheesecake she made. Yes, thank you, Mimi. Oh my gosh, that was delicious too. Yeah, could, thank you for everybody. As a matter of fact, you know, thank you to Mimi. She, God bless her. She put together pork panko and, and packaged these up and turned around and and was and gave and gifted everybody a uh, a a, a balls a basin jar of uh, pork panko and uh, also a shout out to Corey who uh it was so funny we'll kind of get into that we 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 play a game on friday night called chicken charades <laughs> um and uh and i had hollered out i'll be your huckleberry well i did not know this but she had gone to uh, tombstone arizona and brought me back a little uh, i'll be your huckleberry keychain that said that so it was just you know very um coincidental i had that i had spoken those words and she had me a gift that actually said that so but yeah it was fun it was fun brian was really good we found out brian's really good at chicken charades <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever played that there, Mr. Shanker? Have you ever played the game Chicken Charades? Never heard of it. No. Nope. You, you've played charades as a kid, right? Yep. yep. So the adult version of it is you play it with a rubber chicken in your hand, and the rubber chicken has to be the one that describes without you speaking the uh, word that you're trying to convey to the audience. Gotcha. And so it was uh, it was it was quite quite the way to start us start us all off you know, laughing hysterically uh, with some of the guesses that are being thrown out there to try to guess whoever was up there with the chicken. So it was, nice. it, it was, it was fun. Brian, what would you say that was your favorite, favorite part of the trip? Uh, well, I, I mean, overall, I love the whole thing, but the, the lanterns were really cool. Yeah. That experience. 
I, I would have to say that. And for everybody who was there, you guys will be able to uh, to witness this. But for those who you weren't who weren't there, the last lantern we did was for the Cole Keto Rocks family. So everybody got a chance to touch this lantern. And and when I say it takes a village to light one of these lanterns, I am not exaggerating at all. It takes a village. It took damage to have. He was double uh, lighting with two. He had two lighters in his hands underneath lighting the, the things. And he had many hands trying to light these lanterns on fire. But the, the, the last one that we lit, when we let go of it, it just started going right toward the water. And it was like within an inch of literally just going right into the water. And we all started chanting up, up, up. And I kid you not, right before it touched, it just shot up. And uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, nice. I did. I watched the video of the lighting of that. And I was like, all those lighters, they're going to light that thing on fire. But uh, luckily, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> no, I think I don't think it, I think everyone became uh, got away from that event unscathed. No burns, no third degree yeah. burns. Well, Corey had a little bit of a. She she, she, touched, she touched one of those lighters to her arm. Accident oh, when she was standing right. back up. <laughs> but but overall she's a good second degree burn that doesn't count we're only talking about third degree burns <laughs> <Okay>. here <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah nobody so, caught on fire that's right nobody caught. so yeah that was that was probably my favorite event uh there's a lot of great moments i mean they, just to get along just to sit down and, and come alongside some of our people that like brian says we get a chance to see online but we never get a chance to see in person just to be able to to hear their stories and the inspiration uh, that they are and, and, and the struggles that they go through to get to where they are today. So that was the, my takeaway was we have an awesome group of people who are trying to inspire others by living a life that causes them to be healthy and, and, and what they have to go through both at their home, family, and at work with their coworkers, because let's face it, um, people look at keto or carnivore like we're crazy like you guys are on some type of cult diet and uh, the reality of it is the way we're eating is the normal way for humans for the majority that humans have been on this planet is the way we should be eating yeah real so, food real food that's a great way of putting it real food and and you know the the, the, the cool thing about it was is that people were willing to share and be vulnerable in that group, which just made it really, really special. So I don't know where we will hold next year's if we hold one, but I know for the majority of people, they definitely want to hold one. So we will have to wait and see um, where that may be. Maybe we could do a keto cruise, Brian. What do you think about that? <laughs> Maybe. Then we don't have to worry about the food. It's already cooked for us. It's all you can eat. We just show up and take the parts that we want. <laughs> I wonder if they could. Uh, I wonder if they could just block off a, one of those uh, cafeterias or restaurant or dining areas that's just strictly keto carnivore. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't either. Well, maybe. there is a keto cruise. Is there? Already. Yeah. Well, maybe that solves the problem. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Dr. Ooh. Barry was talking about it. Okay. Well, maybe we need to do to, to find out when he does his and we'll just maybe we can piggyback on his. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, that would be bad. So Brian, uh, what's going on with the uh, meat deals of the week? What do you, what deals do you have for us this week? All right. So I've I've noticed a little bit of a slowdown this week on on what they're what's out there. And I think that's partially because uh, we're winding down the summer, kids are going back to school, um, that kind of thing. But I still still was able to find some good stuff. Um, I'm, again, I keep bringing up this Carnes Quality Foods, this uh, store that Linda had asked me to look into. And I really wish there was one near me. They're all in central PA, but um, they've got some choice grade boneless steakhouse sirloin steaks at six forty nine dollars a pound. Uh, they've got some choice grade boneless New York strip steaks at eleven ninety nine dollars a pound. And some boneless Angus beef tenderloins, um, like a whole tenderloin for uh, $13.99 a pound. So I'm sure she hits that store quite often. I'm assuming she lives close to it. Um, 
Food Lion, they've got some choice grade bone in T bone steaks, $7.99 a pound. And uh, Aldi. So Aldi, they don't typically have much that they advertise, but uh, you guys were talking about bison once. Aldi has a boneless, great range bison strip loin steak for $13.99 a pound. I don't know if you guys are going to run out and, and try that. Is that something you'd be interested in trying? That that price is not bad though for thirteen ninety nine for bison. Yeah, hmm. I stopped. Uh, I went. I went by the. Uh, I know. I went out looking at meats yesterday, and I'm I'm literally jaw on the floor how expensive meats are right now. And even at the seafood counter, like my crab legs that I normally get, they were fifteen ninety nine a pound. When normally I, they're always you know between seven ninety nine and nine ninety nine a pound. But wow. fifteen ninety nine a pound. I mean, that's that's quite substantial increase. I've been seeing the crab legs, the snow crab legs. Um, twelve ninety nine is the cheapest that I saw them at Giant, and they're going to be more expensive at Giant. But the other day they were seventeen ninety nine a pound for those. Yeah, they shut up. Yeah, that's crazy. What anyway? What else? Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Brian. That's okay. So Harris Teeter. They've got some rancher grade bone in porterhouse and T-bone steak value packs at $6.99 a pound. Um, they've got some 80% 80, 80 lean ground chuck at $2.99 a pound. And they've got those single serving, you know, single package Strauss grass fed ribeye steaks. Those are $9.99 per package. And Brian, Kroger's got um, choice grade boneless beef brisket for $2.99 a pound. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. When's that, when's that start? So that one starts today, and that one runs through the 17th. Actually, I didn't mention any of the, the dates on those. The Carnes deals run through the 16th. Food Lion and Aldi and Harris Teeter and Kroger all run through the 17th of August. Wow, yeah, that two sounds 90, great. Two ninety nine a pound for beef brisket. You've That's got really them there. You've got them from there before, right, Brian? Yes, yes. In fact, I probably have one in my freezer downstairs. But I was just there. I was just there yesterday looking for to see if they had any of that. But uh, I'll have to go back. Yeah. So that deal didn't start until today. So okay. So you didn't really miss out on anything. So you should be able to get out there, and they, they sh you should still be able to find a bunch of them. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for letting us know what the meat deals of the week are in, in other people's areas and our areas. And so people listen, if you're looking to get good meats at good prices, you need to tune into us. And you also need to go check out Brian Shanker's meat tribe channel on YouTube and subscribe to it and uh, follow him because he gives you more deals than the one he gives us here. But, uh, and if you find deals in your area, by all means, email him or comment on one of his videos. So other people, can see what else is out there as well. Absolutely. Cool. And, uh, you know, talking about, talking about something that's really good. And I, this, this was after the event. So, so we got a chance to go to a place that Peggy and I like to go to that got turned on place called, I'll give them a shout out Randolph's on the river. And this place gives you homemade pork rinds with hot homemade pimento cheese. And, that is a delicious combination. <laughs> Did you eat the rest of those pork rinds, Brian? Uh, no, they're in the in the pantry there. <laughs> I saw that you you let, did you enjoy the pork rinds and the, the pimento cheese? Oh yeah, didn't you notice how the well the cheese dish it was, was gone? It was gone. gone. Yeah, I know that <laughs> it was gone. And then I, I I saw you guys left there, and you guys went to your uh, your diner up in uh, your area before you got on board your flight. Yeah, I had to balance out the pork rinds. I can't just have pork rinds for a meal. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a meal. No. What you have at the diner? Do you remember? I cra crab cakes. Ah, in Maryland, gotta have crab cakes. How are they? Ah, oh, they have the best crab cakes. They're, it's like that big lump crab meat. No filler. Very little filler. Yeah, if any. Yeah, I don't think there's any in that. Wow, that sounds good. And what's the what's the name of that diner? We give them a shout out. Double T Diner. This Double is T. one in Pasadena. Yeah, we used to have one in uh, Frederick by uh, FSK Mall, but that closed down. Um, so Brian, my wife and I, we like diners too. So we um, we go to Mountain View 
down off the end of 40, near the end of Route 40. Do you guys ever go there when you're in town? Yeah, I've gone there several times. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. They've got good crab cakes too. I, lately, I've been getting um, they've got crab stuffed mushroom caps, and wow. they're they're like bigger than golf balls. They're they're really good. Wow, how much are those, Brian? Oh, uh, I don't even. I don't know. I think it that's like a side dish or an appetizer. So it's I think it's less than ten bucks, and you get four of them. Wow, that's a good deal. Yeah, and they've got good crab cakes there too. So I don't know if they're if they're as good, because I remember the ones at Double T were like, you know, they're like as big as your fist, you know, yeah. real, real big. <clears throat> well, I can tell you what, I was inspired. I mean, one of the other favorite part was hearing, like, we had Jeff Darty drove all the way from Kansas City. He has lost 68 pounds in the last year since being on keto carnivore. He's more carnivore now. You know, Linda has lost a whole person. I think she lost 120 or 100 and. 130 i think she said yeah it's it was a lot um i'm trying to think who else jones lost a lot um do you remember anybody else i i don't want to butcher people's names and have them losing more weight than they are but it was just so good to see everybody you remember somebody else there was a lot of inspirational stories and i'm getting them all jungled in my head right now no i can't remember specific numbers at at the moment but yeah I, they're all like you know at different phases and it's just cool to to hear everybody's journey you know and the fact that you know people drove from connecticut uh came from arizona this really came from all different places across the country to gather together and i you know it was just a very special moment to have those people to be vulnerable share their stories and to be able to share in um, the meats that brian and kudos to brian too my man the ribeyes he cooked they, he might have messed up one or two of them and he switched between him and shannon but i mean those ribeyes mine was perfect medium rare just like i like it <laughs> uh, now i did find out something about damage when you're in the kitchen cooking you got to watch him because he'll just start cooking the cut, cutting the raw steak right off the ribeyes and start eating the ribeyes <laughs> right in front of you in the kitchen without even putting on the, the heat so uh i have to roll the tape on that one i'll have to include the video so people will see see what you do behind the scenes and he's like oh, that looks pretty good <laughs> well there are a couple of little scraps that were hanging off the e ends of the a couple of those steaks so i just pulled them off and ate them <laughs> beef tartare right yeah yeah <laughs> good it was it was good so, Brian, what other restaurants, Shanker that is, what other restaurants do you go to out in Maryland to, to go out to eat, take your family to, that you like to? Uh, you know, there's a there's a restaurant right in our neighborhood in the villages of Urbana called Atlantic Grill, and they've got some pretty good, pretty good food. It's not, I'm sure you could get it more keto friendly, but they've got, um, they've got some scallops with a sweet chili sauce mm -hmm. and, uh, and roasted Brussels sprouts that are that are really good they cook a decent steak um those that that's one of our go-to's that probably the main one just because it's close in um back when brian was eating other kinds of food he used to go to uh mexicali cantina a lot yeah, yeah. um and i i used to go there but i i never had it i haven't been there in quite a while but i never had a chance brian used to post a picture of the scallop dish from there that just looked incredible yeah i used to go there back when i was still pescatarian yeah and then i went back a couple times uh actually with bob perry and uh for like a lunch and they had a um what was the dish but i'd have to scale it down and it would just be like meat and egg <laughs> mm -hmm. like you know like i eat <laughs> But it's hard. That one's a hard one to, to get around all the other stuff that they have. You know, I used to love their guacamole. They have really good guacamole. Oh yeah, I like their salsa. Their salsa is a little bit different. It's it's little peppery tasting, like black pepper kind of taste to it, and it's got got a little bit of a bite to it, which I like. So, that, um, trying to think of of you know, and some people knock it, but um, Texas Roadhouse. Um, you can always get a good steak there. And the good, good thing about Texas Roadhouse, I mean, maybe not always because uh, they'll, 
when they bring you your steak, they wait for you to cut into it to see if it's cooked to the proper temp. And if it's not, they'll redo it and you're not charged for it. So we've had the last time we were there that that happened. Mine came out more well done like than than it should have been. And they took it back and cooked another one. And the, the new one was was just fine. You know, I've had bad luck with that Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> so we tried um, Longhorn and we had bad luck with Longhorn. And, yeah, and see, now I, I prefer Longhorn over yeah, Texas I, 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 I would agree. Yeah, I've had, I've had more positive experience at Longhorn. Not that I've had bad experiences at, at the Texas Roadhouse because I really, their, their ribeye is really good there. Yeah, I didn't try the ribeye. I got the um, prime rib, and it was just tasteless mm. and yeah, tough. Yeah. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, like we always <laughs> we always get the ribeye there. And but yeah, like I said, now in Longhorn's defense, I think we got it as carryout. So whenever and people might not realize this, if you're ordering red meat to go to bring home, what I do every time, I don't order it and then go to the restaurant to pick it up. I don't place the order until I'm close to there because your, your, your meal's gonna keep cooking as right. you're driving it back home enclosed in those to-go boxes. And we always order the meat just a little bit under what we want. So I'll get it ordered medium rare. So, and I'm taking it out of the store, you know, the restaurant as soon as it's ready. So it's not sitting there under a warmer or anything like that. So I'm trying to, trying to time it and all those restaurants up in up in Frederick are about a 15 minute drive at least from my house so um you can see I'm trying to all the moving parts to get that meal back home and not have it well done or or even slightly over medium right yeah someone was telling me over the weekend that when they, they use uber eats and I forget which restaurant it was but they called to complain when they got their order they were having missing parts of their order and cool. when they call the restaurant the restaurant says man we cannot stand using that it happens all the time because because the riders he said the drivers were actually eating those side <laughs> dishes and the drink and so we get these calls all the time because i trust you. they were like look i promise you that we put all the all your food items and your drink together because we check it off before we, we package it up and send it and but we hear complaints and it's just getting old you know, they're about ready to stop letting them serve their food uh, as being a stop uh, because of that. So that's terrible. But, you know, another another thing that we learned during COVID, during the shutdown with like takeout taxi, Uber Eats and, you know, what's what's the other one? I forget the other big one. Um, I, I can't remember. We stopped using them because they charge the restaurants 30 percent of the ticket. So the restaurants make 30% less on those deals. So we'll, we'll always either, I'll either go pick it up and, and it's going to be faster too. Sometimes right. you order through those things. It takes an hour to get your food where, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there right when the food picks up. So they take a 30% hit on that, on that ticket, you know, on top of when the food gets there, then the customers are complaining, like you said, missing food and, you know, stuff overcooked sometimes so that's a uh, i always we either use their their delivery service or um or i go get it basically got a chance talking about prime rib peggy and i got a chance to uh to uh share our favorite spot with brian and uh he he got a chance to taste the prime rib that we love to eat on a regular basis and uh Brian, you just ordered yours raw, didn't you? Rare, I mean. <laughs> Rare, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I took it however they had it sitting there. I just like, yeah, <laughs> it was good. We sat by our fireplace, so if you wanted to cook it a little bit more, you could <laughs> hold the plate over the fire. That's true. <laughs> I I saw those two pictures, right? You guys both posted, posted your cut of that, or was that a ribeye? Because I remember seeing Brian post something that I thought was a little little too under for me and then I saw Jim's and I was like oh that looks good yeah that that was prime rib mine was medium rare which is I always order mine and and Brian's was rare I believe well I yeah I forget how I actually ordered it I just said um 
I said medium rare, maybe, but I said the rarer the better. So they just brought brought that, but that was perfect. Mm. So you like yours medium rare there, Mr. Shanker? Uh, I t I actually like it medium. My wife likes medium rare, um, and and I can tolerate medium rare, but medium is really where where it's at for me. Okay. Well, this this prime rib was so good, you could have it cooked anyway, and it would be good. Because yeah, Shannon likes hers a little more done, and it was still good because she didn't she couldn't finish hers, so I finished hers for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing about Brian; he's not gonna let meat or the bones go to waste. He's like a uh, Oh, it was so funny because it's on Sunday after we got back home. I turned the TV on and uh, Great Outdoors was playing on one on Sundance. <laughs> and I turned it on. It was right before the old 96er. And yeah. uh, I was just rolling on that. And I was thinking because the prime ribs at this place in, in Old Town Fredericksburg, it's they're huge. They big old the big bones in there. And and Brian's like, hey, wait a minute, you didn't get all the, the cartilage off that bone. And he grabs the bone, he's gnawing on it. <laughs> <laughs> but they all have nutritional value. So you got to, they, I tell you, those bones would be great for, for bone making bone broth. Yeah, if I wasn't traveling, I would have taken those bones with me. Definitely. Yeah. I'm just surprised you made it, you could fly the eggs. The eggs did made it all, all the way without cracking. That's awesome. Well, I packed them well. I put them in the Ziploc bag first in case they did break. <laughs> and then, uh, and they were in the carton, of course. But then I had a, um, I had brought, I brought a, um, a beach towel with me. So I just rolled it up in a beach towel and put it in the, you know, put it in a nice spot in the, in the suitcase. Well, that's awesome. They made them back. You know, before I forget also, I think Linda, who made the pork belly, she's got some place called uh, Grass. Let me look it up. Grass Fed. What is it called? Grasslandbeef.com that she gets her pork belly from. It's actually uh, U.S. Wellness Meats. Is that? Yeah, that's that's where that's where you order it from. But it, yeah, it's labeled Grassland when you get it. For okay. Some reason, it's on the label, but I'm just I'm just but, seeing. I'm seeing their web. I'm trying to look. She sent over the, the website and I do see that it's U.S. Wellness Meats. Yeah. But the website says grasslandbeef.com. So that's how you get to them. I mean, there may be another website for U.S. Wellness, but I'm just looking at this. But their prices are really good. I'm looking at for uh, one and a half pounds of whole pork belly, fresh portions, $15.90. And the more you buy... The price goes down if you buy eight or more of them. It's thirteen fifty two, so that's uh, and I tell you what, that pork belly was delicious. The how and, and and I think she says that she just cooks it, uh, puts salt and pepper, puts it in the air fryer for twenty minutes, then takes it out, turns them over, puts them in for ten more minutes, and I think that's it, thirty minutes, and you're done. Yeah, and I was definitely I couldn't stop eating. That's another thing I couldn't stop eating. I think that. That added to the brick in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget. Was it Friday night? Was it we we all took a walk or did something Friday after everything was? And man, I just know I was talking to Brian. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I got a break right here in my upper abdomen. Brian's like, yeah, I, I do too. And Saturday, I, it it didn't go away till Saturday afternoon. I I didn't start getting hungry until we started literally um, frying up the hamburgers and um, that that yeah. evening. Yeah, me too. That, yeah. But do uh, you break out the hamburgers and the bacon, the romaine lettuce and the and the mayo and then have pork rinds. And then you have the I, I think we had broccoli, cheddar, casserole, along with the chicken salads. I mean, it doesn't take long for you taking a little sample of everything that you've eaten a whole lot of food more than you normally would. So I'm, I'm glad to be back home and in, in the confounds of uh, where my habits are. <laughs> So, so I was I jumped I jumped on that website real quick just to see what uh, ribeyes are going sure. for. So for a 15 ounce ribeye, that's just that's one ounce under uh, a pound, right? Right. Twenty five dollars and ninety three cents for one for for that ribeye. That's not per pound. That's for the ribeye. Wow. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that deal at Harris Teeter last week that you brought to our attention—that's 
the reason why I, mean, I love Harris Teeter's ribeyes there. That's where my go-to for ribeyes. I mean, and that sale they had on last week, I mean, you could save a lot of, a lot of money. I mean, my too bad. My refrigerator and freezer is already stocked up. They, they were, especially for this event. My, I, I think I'll, I'll post a picture that the refrigerator was just totally from top to bottom stuff full of the food that we had to bring to the event. So I have room maybe even we even brought way more back than i thought we were going to have left over so i've been yeah, living off of that yeah there was a lot left over yeah i mean we just ate we ate a, and everybody ate a lot it was it was i don't think anyone went away hungry at least i hope they didn't and i just stuck with the meat and i was stuffed <laughs> and eggs yes and and the and, the, and, and bacon the bacon, and you ate bacon. Was it? <laughs> Well, no, and that's that's true. The, so the, the the burgers that we fried up Saturday night was and Brian fried up bacon. We had bacon, bacon, duck eggs. It was a it was a good combo. Oh, you guys are making me so hungry. I haven't eaten today yet. You know, I always wait for that twelve o'clock time to hit, and uh, all this talk about these steaks, and I don't have anything thought out, so I'm going to be hurting. Well, if you want to, you want to jump in the car and drive over to Virginia, we can go grab a prime rib. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> well, with that being said, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. And Brian, what would you tell people who are watching for the first time? He's eat eat. Your meat. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, everybody out there, stay well, stay safe, stay out of the hospital, and we will see you next Friday night. Hey, whoa, no, no. Hey, Brian, where you got you guys playing this weekend? Where's Kicks playing? Oh, the Tomato Festival in, uh, right outside of Columbus, Ohio. And that's this weekend? Friday, yeah. All right. There you go. Have a good show, everybody. Make sure you catch your favorite carnivore in Ohio, the Tomato Fest. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. You just muted yourself, Brian. Tell us how you bit. did that. <laughs> we we uh, missed half of it, the last half of it, Brian, because your telephone yeah. kicked in and you muted I got you. a phone call, so I, maybe I should. What do you put it on airplane mode? Yes. No, I don't know. No, he needs. Uh, yeah, if he's connected to internet. Yeah, airplane mode should work. Oh, we just lost them all together now. Uh oh, that doesn't work, does it? Don't listen to me. <laughs> too late. <laughs> he listened to me. We've lost him forever. Uh-oh. Brian? <laughs> Mr. Shanker? Uh-oh. Well, this is a nice edit spot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hold, yeah, hold on a second. I'm going to go grab two things I want to bring up that, to, that I forgot for props. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. Are you guys there? Yeah, yeah. Jim will have to get something. He'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I think when, um, I don't know if when I put it to airplane mode, it cut cut everything off. So I turned airpl airplane mode off. <laughs> yeah i guess that doesn't work <laughs> i've never used airplane mode but i know jim jim does so sorry i don't know how much got cut off yeah usually airplane mode will still work with wi-fi but uh i don't know I'm i gave you terrible advice there brian i apologize <laughs> for that that does not work <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway go ahead and just ask the question from a new i'll edit all that stuff out Okay, so 